Hi, my name is Jonathan Rizzo, KC3EEY, BLF enthusiast and electrical engineering student at the University of Scranton. Low frequency natural radio is an exciting field to study and learn about. Naturally occurring radio emissions in the VLF band, such as spherics, whistlers, chorus, triggered emissions, and hiss, offer clues and hints to understanding the ionosphere magnetosphere and influence of solar weather on Earth. Detection of spherics allows for precise lightning location through time group arrival method using a network of VLF receivers. While, while it is worthwhile to understand whistlers themselves, they can also be used as tools to understand the electron density of solar wind plasma along the whistler's propagation path. A rural chorus, often occurring alongside a rural displays can be a useful tool in understanding the aurora. Amateur radio operation can be done at VLF. At 8.27 kHz, often called a dreamer's band by the VLF community, continuous wave and a digital mode called coherent BPSK are used for communications over over thousand miles away, often at extremely low power levels. Successful transmissions of either continuous wave and messages from 5 to 100 characters have been done by amateurs within the past 10 years. As you could see here, for the transmission setups, the loading coils are quite large. VLF enthusiasts have been using VLF receivers for many years to listen to and record natural radio events. Power line interference has always been the enemy to VLF natural radio. So listeners would often have to venture out in remote areas, tens of miles away from power lines to be able to capture natural radio events. As of late, automated capture of VLF events is possible using a PC with the sound card as a VLF SDR, using open source software called VLF RX tools, written by VLF enthusiast Paul Nicholson. The software records the VLF signal GPS timestamps it, filters out the 50 or 60 hertz main sound with the tracking notch filter, detects whistler and chorus events, as well as sudden ionospheric disturbances through VLF transmitters, and allows for live listening and recording on a hard drive. Because VLF receivers require an earth ground for sensitivity, 50 or 60 hertz main sound can be injected into the receiver from a PC sound card or power supply. For VLF audio, a minimum of two audio isolation transformers are required to prevent main sum injection, but the VLF receiver still has to be powered by a battery. In this project, a VLF receiver is used that is powered with a regular power supply. This simplifies the installation, allowing the use of a common Cat5 cable. This is made possible by an audio isolation transformer and an isolated DC to DC converter operating at a frequency much higher than the VLF band. The receiver can be constructed to fit inside a PVC pipe using foam pipe insulation with copper tape along the length of it for the antenna element. The foam insulation prevents the antenna assembly from becoming microphonic and having winds causing noise. At the other end, instead of using a PC and a sound card as the VLF SDR, the Raspberry Pi 3B with audio injector sound card is used for low power and compact VLF reception and analysis. The pulse per second output from a Trimble Res SMT360 GPS timing receiver connects to one channel of the sound card for signal timestamping as well as a GPIO pin for disciplining NTPD. VLF RX tools runs on the Pi and performs all automated functions of capturing, timestamping, filtering, event detection, recording, and streaming utilizing named circular buffers between various utility programs. It's very similar to the functionality of USGS Earthworm for seismic signal capture, event detection, and analysis. VLF RX tools creates the necessary data for further analysis of VLF events and visualization of data with GNU plot. This is an example of the VLF receiver mounted to a mast for production. I invite you to check out my poster for more details and links for further information and participation in VLF reception and amateur radio, and reach out if you have any questions. 
I'd like to thank Paul Nicholson for his VLF RX tool software, his technical assistance, and amazing contributions to myself for this project and the VLF community. I'd also like to thank the National Science Foundation and the University of Scranton for financial support of this project.